this is a Commodore C64. It's the latest C version which often suffers from noisy jail bars on the screen. This TV does a good job of hiding them, but they're still quite prominent. So we're going to build and install this V1 Lumafix 64 by E5 Frog. And we're going to do it right now. Mark fixes stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services or browse a library of talented makers' designs, add them to your cart and have them delivered directly to your door. You'll read in forums that the later version of the C64, the C64C, oder der C wir und Sex X2 in Deutschland, was particularly prone to jail bars. This is a later 87 revision B model and isn't too bad but does show some jail bars, even with a top quality retro computer shack composite cable. I'm not going to lie and say I understand fully, but the Lumafix 64 apparently inverts the noise that causes the gel bars and injects it back into the video signal, balancing it out. We'll need a 40 pin socket, a bunch of header pins, the board itself. I ordered it from PCBWay, link below. A 74 HCT14 hex Schmidt triggered inverter IC, three 2K3266 style trimmer pots, and a pair of 470 picofarad ceramic capacitors. Make sure you get the 3266 style trimmers with the triangular leg formation. I got the wrong ones first with the legs in a row and they didn't fit. We'll be fitting the hex inverter first. You'll also notice an alternative location for an SMD version of the part, but we're going in the holes today. Likewise, there are alternative SMD locations for the two capacitors. Let's pop this in. We can't use a socket because we need the space for the VIC-2 socket around it. Then we'll pop in the capacitors afterwards. Something worth noting is the two chip notch markers on the PCB for the socket and the pins. With the IC in the middle, it's going to get quite cramped. Line up the notch on the IC and the board. My Smurf heative is a bit dried out today. Better farm some more. Let's flip it over and get to work. We'll use the standard 330 degrees C today. A splash of Topnik Flux to help the pins take. And with the iron up to temperature, we set to soldering the inverter chip into place. Please forgive my clumsiness, but working around the camera is a bit of a challenge at times. I'm using a new handy helper to hold the board, and it's a bit wobbly as well. The solder takes relatively well, but it does feel a bit like I'm chasing the board around to solder as it wobbles. Oh no, this is getting silly. This will not do. Hello old friend. Now we're clamped in solid. I'll clean up the mess I made whilst the board was bouncing around. Lovely. Removing the smurf poop a little bit is left behind. I take off the remnants with a repeated dabbing of the blue dung. It's a touch wonky. I think all the vibrating caused it to drop. Whilst not ideal, I think it'll be okay. I don't like to hide my flubs with reworking things, so we'll crack on and get the capacitors installed. Just 
just putting the leads through the board and bending the legs to keep them in place as usual. Then, heating the lead in the board at the same time, we feed the solder into the joint. The solder was a bit claggy, so I redid those joints with a little bit of flux and added some for the other leads. My new side cutters have a retaining clip that stops the cut leads flying off and blinding passers by as well. Both the capacitors are now installed, so we can move on. This row of header pins needs to be installed next, because once the VIC-2 socket is in place, the top of them will be inaccessible for soldering. I don't have a complete row long enough, but cutting a few bits to length will work fine. These pins will be inserted into the C64 in place of the VIC-2 chip. I don't want these dropping out, so I use a ton of Smurf droppings to hold them in place. And of course, loads of lovely flux. A few of the pins were bridging, so I make double sure there's no rogue connections between the pins and the hex inverter pins. The pins heated the blue tack quite a lot, so it's a bit harder to remove than usual. OK, that doesn't look too bad, but the wonky chip is still a worry. Socket next. Oh, cobblers. It doesn't fit because of the pin height. Great. I think I'm going to try and flatten these down a bit and see if I can get away with not desoldering them all. I know you're all screaming at me now. What a mess. I suppose I better reflow these now. I actually thought this would be a really quick build, but I keep shooting myself in the foot. Okay, now let's see if that could work. It's not flush by any means, but there's enough of the socket pins for me to solder now. To hold the socket in place for soldering, we'll simply turn the corner pins. With those holding the socket in place, I actually think that the fit will be okay. I hope you're enjoying this video. My work is supported and enhanced by my amazing patrons and in return they get exclusive perks. If you'd like to help me make more videos like this, please visit patreon.com forward slash markfixesstuff. With my patrons' help, I'm able to buy materials and equipment to make more, hopefully helpful, content. Patron support also helps me justify the huge amount of time I spend doing all this stuff to my lovely wife.
I think we're going to be okay. Just this row of pins now, and then the three trimmer parts. These don't even match. This is possibly the worst video I've ever made. Let's move on quickly and get this all soldered up. Incidentally, the side of the socket is straight, but the camera makes it look a bit bowed. Right, now those three trimmers. I don't think I can mess this bit up. Having said that, this is my third attempt at buying the right ones. The first ones had the legs in a row, and the second had the turning screw on the side of the component where it wouldn't fit next to the others. It must be 2 kilo ohm 3266 parts. We'll do these all in one go. I bent the legs again to hold them in position. These are the last components we need to solder before we install the Lumafix 64 in the computer. I'll get these out of the way so we can access our third leg a bit more easily. And hot tool in hand, we get down to finish the job. Finally, we give them the snip. And after making a few mistakes, the Lumafix 64 is complete and ready to be installed in the Commodore C64C. That wonky chip fits. It's the next day, the sun is singing, the birds are shining, and all is world with the right. What could possibly go wrong? We have a screw missing from this machine, it being one of the later revisions that has three screws at the front and the rest of the case held with clips. If you push down on the lower part of the case, you can open this model without breaking those clips. Then holding the case open, we move around to the other side and repeat the process. There are also plastic clips in the back of the case that I like to gently agitate until they come free. Gently lift the case and remove the power LED cable. And remove the two screws holding the keyboard secure. The keyboard then lifts out and you can disconnect the cable from the computer. Note that the connector is keyed for when we put it back. Put the keyboard to one side for a moment. Now to remove what Commodore laughingly called shielding, but it's really just tin foil on a bit of cardboard. With my anti-static brush, we evict the dust bunnies from around the VIC-2 chip. And ignoring the fact that I have several so-called chip pullers, I revert back to my old method of gently levering the IC out of the socket with a flat bladed tool. All chip pullers seem to do for me is damage chips. Chip out and legs nice and straight. Perfect.
it's your time to shine, little Lumafix. Again, making sure that the notch on the socket matches the notch on the board, we push the messy little contraption into place. Then we put the original chip into the socket on the board, taking care not to bend any legs or pins. Let's power up the C64. Well, that looks rubbish, but it's not a result of my awful handiwork. The Lumafix needs to be calibrated for the display. This is best done by tweaking the trimmers from the back of the C64 to the front, or so I've read. You get a feel for it quite quickly. And although it's difficult to see with the camera on my rubbish old TV set, it really does work and cleans up the gel bar significantly. You could spend hours fine-tuning this for a specific set. That looks really quite good to me, but the forums say you should also check the picture on running software with lots of colours. I'm impressed with the Lumafix 64, and I'm even more impressed that it works considering just how bad my build was. Massive grateful thanks to my amazing patrons on the screen right now. You can join them by visiting patreon.com forward slash Marfix's stuff. Thanks to all who support, watch, like and share. Why not check out these other videos? The gummy bears know where you live. <laughs>